Speech bubbles in comic books look fairly simple to design, but which tool is the best for creating them efficiently? Most coloring artists would work in Photoshop, and many times the lettering would also be added inside the PSD file. However, Photoshop is not the best tool for typography. InDesign, on the other hand, has loads of cool features when it comes to creating dynamic speech bubbles. So here we are in InDesign and here is a perfect example of how effective a speech bubble can be with this setup and formatting that I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. So you can see how flexible it is and easy to amend, adjust and obviously you can add more text into it and later on in this tutorial we will also learn how to add multiple bubbles, connect them together and maybe even use text thread between the bubbles. So there's loads to cover and without any further delay, let's get started. So the first thing that you would normally need to do is to choose what type of shape you want to work with. I'm going to go with the default or standard speech bubble, which would be like the normal talking in comic books. And for this, I'm using the elliptical frame tool, which you can find here in the toolbar. And by the way, there are the frame tools and also the shape tools and there's not much difference between the two. The only thing is that with the shapes, you immediately get a color associated to the shape itself, and it's set to become a graphic object, while with these frames, you have the complete freedom of assigning content to it, but these things you can always change at a later time anyway, so it doesn't really matter which tool set you start with. When I press W on the keyboard, switching to normal view, you can see not just the bounding box, but the actual outline or silhouette of this shape. So now that we have this ready, we will also need to have the tail for the speech bubble, which can be created in two different ways, either with the pen tool or again using shapes and the pathfinder panel. So let me show you both of these. If I use the pen tool, from the toolbar, you can select it or press P on the keyboard. You can draw the tail simply by clicking once, clicking again, and then click and drag to define one of the curves, then simply click on that last point again, and then click and drag to define this last section here. So there's a tail created, and of course we can always resize it, and move it closer, we can check whether that's going to work or not. The other way of creating this would be to rely on shapes. So I could draw a couple of additional shapes. Let's just draw a circle and then holding down the option or alt key, I can duplicate this. Let's just set it up somewhere around there. And then I'm going to draw another rectangular frame as well on top of all of this. Let's just go somewhere there. And then if I select these three shapes, I'll just put them here on the side. It looks quite confusing at this point. But if I select all of them together and go to the Pathfinder panel, I can just simply use the Subtract option with which we end up having the first shape created. So once again, that little detail there is the only thing that's going to be left after removing all the other shapes from it. So anything that you draw on top of the first shape is going to be removed uh, from this group. So once again, subtract ends up having that small little shape, which again, we can still resize and change. And we can even use the direct selection tool. A is the shortcut on the keyboard with which we can get to the handles and adjust them and refine them the way we want it. So there's two different ways to get to the same thing. I'm just going to stick to the one that I used with the pen tool that I created with that. And I am going to now duplicate both of these shapes. So we will need to have two of each of them. So I will first of all, set them up the way I want them. Let's just say something like that. And I am going to select both of these together and duplicate them. Maybe I will make them a little bit smaller so we can have both of them together or next to each other. So there's the other version. And maybe I'll just put this here on the side for now. So once we have the duplicates ready. Now we can start assigning colors. So we will need to have a color assigned to this shape here. I will set it to white fill and black stroke. 
So let's choose black stroke, increase the size of the stroke. Now you can also go into the stroke settings if you have the stroke panel open and there you can decide where you want to align the stroke, whether it's center align or outside. I normally prefer to keep it outside and that's going to be more important once we start adding the inset spacing. So around four points I think looks quite good and then I'm going to do the same thing with this little tail. So for this one I am going to set up white fill and I will also increase the size of the stroke size which needs to also be set to black. Now we need to change the order of these objects which we can do from the layers panel or we can also do it with shortcut. Command the control square brackets is the way you can move things in front or behind other items but once again you can also use the layers panel and just drag the highlighted element below these other shapes so that's the order you need to have the tail at the bottom on top of that you have the filled speech bubble and then comes this other tail which you have to just simply fill with white and you will see soon why we need that then this last shape is going to actually be the placeholder for our text so once it's selected, we can right click on this and choose content text to switch it into a text frame. Or you can just simply select some text, which I have already prepared here on the left, copy that. And using the type tool, even if you just click into an empty frame, it automatically converts it into a type frame. So I can now just paste the text in, command or control V, and there it is. Now all there is left to do is to align these to each other and once again set up the order in the right way. So for example this text needs to be on top of everything else which we can again do with a shortcut command or control shift square bracket will bring it all the way to the top here in the layers panel. You can see it just jumped up there and if I select these two I can just drag them down align to that other shape behind it. I think that's a good alignment there. Now it doesn't look great at this point but what we are going to do is to first of all select this text frame and go into the text frame options area which you will find in the object menu. So text frame options, command or control B is the shortcut by the way to get to it and make sure you have the preview on just so you can see the changes that you are doing and the first setting that I would normally set here is the center vertical alignment or vertical justification which will keep the text vertically centered and that's different from the center alignment that you get in the paragraph settings that's coming at a later point. So for now we just have this setting for the frame and then I will also use an inset spacing which creates that inner margin which will keep it away from that black outline around the edge. I think around three millimeters or four millimeters is going to work quite nicely. Let's just click OK. And this is obviously something that we can adjust later on. But for now, I'm happy with this. And of course, now we just need to find the right font and size. But this is something I would do with a paragraph style, which will make it easier to reuse these settings on another speech bubble, especially if you are doing a whole comic book and you have a lot of speech bubbles that you need to generate. So the way you do this is simply go to paragraph styles panel, hold down the option or alt key and click on the plus sign. That's going to open up the dialog box straight away. And here just choose first of all the font that you want to work with for which I'm just going to type in the name of the font that's Blambot Pro is the one that I prefer to work with. This is by the way an Adobe font which you can synchronize and find when you go into Adobe fonts and I'm going to keep the settings here the same however I'm going to turn off hyphenation. I don't want the text to be hyphenated and I would like the alignment to be centered so this is under indents and spacing. So that's pretty much all there is to the paragraph settings. I am just going to call this speech bubble and save it. So now if I have this frame selected, I can just click on speech bubble and it will update the formatting. And I can immediately see that the text size is a little bit too big. So I am going to right click and edit this paragraph style. And I will go into the formatting options, keep the preview on and reduce the size until we have the text fitted. I think that works quite well. So nine, oh, maybe we can go 9.5. Yeah, I think that's nice. Let's click okay. So that's now set. 
And if you want to have additional formatting like bold or italic, I recommend to set these up as character styles, which you can easily apply on individual words or lines. So that's something that's going to be on top of your paragraph style. So let me show you this maybe for the bold formatting. If I go to character styles panel, I can just alt click on the plus sign here and call this one bold. And then from the font style, I'm just going to type in bold. So that's all we need and then click OK to accept it. Maybe one additional thing that we can do if we go back to the settings is to add the shortcut to this. So I'm just going to use option or alt key and a number from the numeric keypad, maybe one. So that's going to be a sign now. Let's click OK. So for example, in this text, if I wanted to highlight InDesign is the best, I can now just simply use my shortcut option or alt one. There you go. So this text frame is using the speech bubble paragraph style. But on top of that, we also have this selection of words where we have the character style applied. The good thing about using styles in general in InDesign is that it helps you to stay consistent and it will help you to avoid mistakes and inconsistencies throughout the pages of the comic book. So now that we have this set up and we are taking a closer look at this design, you might notice that the outline of the tail doesn't look that great. Like the ending just finishes abruptly and also it's not the same thickness as the line that we have here on the main bubble area. So this is something that we will have to fix. And for this, I am going to select that shape which has the outline, so the one behind. And in case you have things on top of each other, sometimes it might be difficult to select them without using the layers panel. For this, you can use a shortcut. It's command or control click. That way you can switch between objects. And notice how the color changes up here, which indicates which object is selected. So this is the one which only has the fill color. And underneath it, when I use command or control click, I can select the one which has the outline as well. So now that I have the right shape selected, we can just go to the stroke panel and change the alignment of the stroke also to outside. Because if you recall, that's exactly the same setting we used here on the other shape. But there is still an issue here at the end. For that to be fixed, we have to increase this mitre level to maybe eight. But we can also set the endpoint to be more rounded like this. I am just going to probably keep it uh, sharp by setting the join back to mitre. Now these tail shapes might not be perfectly aligned if you move them separately around. So if that ever happens, what you can do is to move them outside, turn off the stroke setting on one of them, have them both selected and use the align panel, align them horizontally centered and also vertically centered. Then you can go back and select again the black stroke, assign it to the original settings of setting it outside. That way you can make sure that they're perfectly aligned to each other. So I'm going to put this back here, decide where it goes, maybe somewhere around there. Now, the order in which you have these shapes is very important. So once again, you have the text on top of everything else. So that text frame is completely empty. It just has the text and all of those settings that we used before. Then underneath that, we have the tail, which just has a fill color. Then underneath that, we have this speech bubble, which is filled with white and has the black outline. And then all the way at the bottom is the other tail with which we have also that black outline. Now, the reason why you need multiple instances in the first place is to be able to have this flexibility of moving around the tail completely separately from the bubble. And of course, we can even rotate this around, resize it. So it just really gives you a lot of freedom uh, of making changes at any point later on. However, if you get confused having multiple shapes to work with, you can make things a little bit easier by using a single object. So the way I would set that up is by using this original text frame and I am just going to fill it in with white. So I will use a white fill for there and I will also set up the black stroke around it just like before, uh, maybe four points like we set it up originally. I'm going to change the size of this slightly and then I will also pick one of these shapes from here 
Alt click and drag it down. And what I will do next is to select these together and merge them using the Pathfinder panel. So there is this option, combine these shapes. So then it becomes a single object. Now, the advantage of this is obviously that it's easier to work with, so you can't really mess it up. It just moves as one single unit. However, you will still have to go into settings like the stroke, mitre has to be increased a bit, something like that. But more importantly, what you won't be able to change easily is the placement of the tail. Because when I select this speech bubble, you can actually see it's made up of a single outline. So it's not separate parts, it's a single path that runs around here. So that can make things a little bit more difficult when you want to reposition the tail. So instead of doing this, I recommend to keep everything separate like we've seen it up here and instead just select everything together and group them. Command or Control G and that will keep things tidy in the layers panel and also it will make it easier to move it around without losing details or parts of this composition. Now there's still a couple of very interesting things I wanted to show you. First of all, how can you change the shape of this speech bubble to make it a little bit more interesting? Well, for this, I would use the direct selection tool. And don't forget that you have multiple shapes on top of each other. So you don't just simply click on one of these anchor points, but you make a marquee selection around it. That way, both of those ellipses will be affected that are laid on top of each other. So now I can move that point around easily and give this shape a little bit more interesting look. I can also adjust these handles. Once again, I can do the same thing here on the right. And I just love the way the text is formatting itself and changing live as I'm doing this. So I can set this up again somewhere around there. And I think that looks already quite good, but maybe we can just squeeze this up a bit as well. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. That's one of the techniques I highly recommend to remember using the direct selection tool and making a marquee selection around the anchor points. But I also wanted to show you how you can create different types of speech bubbles. So this is like the standard speaking speech bubble, but then we also have these other like standards. For thought, we would have these more like a cloud outline with the little dots. Then uh, we have also shouting and whisper. Now, all of these you can do in InDesign and quite easily. So let me start with shouting. For shouting, I would use the polygon frame tool and just simply click somewhere where then you will be able to type in the number of sides. Let's just type in 20 and click OK. So this is going to create a star with 20 corners. Now, if I click and drag, I can draw this. There it is. And of course, if I want to change the inset, that's again something you can change by just clicking somewhere. We can type in a lower inset, maybe 20%. And you can see the difference already here. So the corners are not that far away from the center of the shape. I can even select this shape and use the eyedropper tool. Just press I on the keyboard and then click on this shape in the background to quickly sample and reuse the same settings. And of course, this can be converted into a text frame just as easily as before using the type tool, click inside it and start typing or placing text. And once you get to the point where you increase the inset spacing, it's going to sort itself out and it will help you to refine the text placement. However, with these type of frames, you might still be struggling to have the formatting set up correctly. So instead of placing the text inside this, you can just draw an ellipse which is going to work much easier when it comes to formatting the text. So 
you would again use two separate frames, one which will hold the text and the other one which is going to be more like the graphic style for the frame. And now let's create a thinking speech bubble. So for this, I'm going to use the ellipse tool again and just draw a couple of ellipses on top of each other. So let's just draw a bigger one in the middle. I'm using the space bar to reposition them quickly. So there it is, just as an example, a few shapes on top of each other. I select all of these together and then unite them using the Pathfinder option here, Add. Now I can add the fill color or use the eyedropper tool again. And there you go. There's the thinking bubble with which again to connect to our main character here, I can just use a couple of ellipses. And once again, I can set it up the same way as before. I can also use smaller ones and so on and so forth. And of course, this would be all grouped together at the end to make it easier to work with. Now let's also see how to combine multiple speech bubbles and create more like a stack from them. So all you would have to do is to repeat the same setup, having once again an empty text frame and the graphic text frame behind it. Then move this here over the other one and you just have to select the tail detail which has the white fill inside it. So once again it's this one and keep moving it up until it reaches the right order in the stacking order. So I was using command square bracket again or you can use the layers panel to drag it up. Now that everything is in the right place, I can select these two, move it around and you can see how that works. I can then simply select these two tail details and move them down, duplicating them, holding down Alt or Option key and dragging with the selection tool. If I decide not to have a connecting detail between the two bubbles, I can even get rid of that and just simply move these two closer to each other. But once again here, if you want the two bubbles to merge, you have to have the right order in the layers panel. But in these cases, you will have to select one of the text frames with the text inside it and actually add a white fill inside it and then it's going to connect them together nicely. So now not only the graphic style is using the white fill, but even the text frame itself. So this is again helping to have that nice merge look there. Just be careful again and keep an eye on the layers panel to make sure that things are in the right order. Now at this point when you have connecting text frames, you can even create text threading between these frames by selecting this little icon here and then clicking on the other speech bubble. Now when I'm making changes to the size of the first one, the text is going to flow back and forth between these two bubbles. So once again, you can see the connection there going back and forth. And that is all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you found it useful. And don't forget to use hashtag yes, I'm a designer when sharing your work on social media inspired by the techniques you learned today. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.